old. And uh, we do have a couple other pages to be handed out, but I'm not sure that we'll quite get to those. Ooh, we may. Uh, but uh, uh, if you need a copy of the other, I mean, go ahead and hand those out, gentlemen. Uh, but if you need a copy of the earlier pages, uh, we're on page number uh, 11 is where we're at. Um, so we're not quite to where uh, they are handing out. So if you want to hold your hand up nice and high, they, they will uh, uh, get the other pages to you if you need it. Uh, if you uh, already have it, uh, then they're just handing out the other the new page. And like I said, uh, we won't, I'm not sure that we'll quite get to that page yet, uh, but we're on page 11 is where we're at. And uh, if you let the washers know that you need the earlier pages, uh, they can get that for you. I'm going to review real quick like here. Uh, we took a break from it last week. I preached, uh, uh, I think it was about discouragement, if I remember correctly. Uh, uh, I can't remember what, what, actually which lesson it was, the message that I preached on. Uh, I didn't uh, go on the lesson here, or didn't teach on the lesson. Uh, but anyway, so we're just looking at the uh, life of Job, and one of the things that he learned uh, was that uh, I am weak, but he is strong, talking about the Lord. Uh, he, uh, he realized that uh, no matter in his weakness, uh, the Lord was still strong, amen? And then we talk about how the Lord can do anything. Um, you know, he's uh, capable of anything, but he can allow anything. And we need to have that in mind. And then he also uh, uh, mentioned, I want to see the Lord through all this. Uh, you know, uh, we wanted to get a glimpse of what the Lord was capable of doing and was able to do. And uh, uh, we see that through, uh, uh, through that uh, lesson uh, and uh, to that point. Then uh, we talked about how uh, Job also, he wanted to be accepted of the Lord. You know, a lot of times people look for uh, approval of man. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I want, I want my mom to approve me, uh, approve of what I, uh, what I do. Or I want my dad, you know, to, to uh, you know, say, yeah, attaboy, or, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't seek for man's approval. We should uh, uh, seek to be approved of the Lord. And we wanted to be accepted of the Lord. And uh, we saw that. Uh, in the lesson, then the, and through the scripture there. Then we also uh, uh, talked about how uh, uh, we can pray no matter what I'm facing. That's what uh, uh, Job learned. He said, hey, I, I, I will pray no matter what I'm facing. And uh, one of the things that he did is he prayed for his friends. Uh, you know, uh, uh, here his friends were, uh, you know, such encouraging friends. You know, well, Job, you must have some sin in your life. That's the reason why you're doing what you're doing and, and acting the way you're acting and all that. And and of course that wasn't the case, but uh, uh, he uh, uh, realized he could uh, pray for his friends, and uh, that's what he did. And then we ended with uh, uh, Roman numeral 6 there, page number 10, uh, and you are never alone, and uh, that was one of the things that uh, he also learned. You know, you're never alone when you're going through what you're going through. Um, and we're going to uh, look at verse number 11, uh, Job chapter number 42, verse number 11. We'll have a word of prayer to get right into the lesson here tonight. Job chapter, excuse me, number 42. We ended on page number uh, uh, page number 11. Uh, by the way, I, I did mention that Satan many times will try to make you feel that you're alone, you know, uh, that you're the only one going through this. Nobody else is going through this. And, and uh, you know, you, uh, you're it, you know. And, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, he wants you to think that uh, you're, uh, uh, you're going through this alone. You know, that nobody cares about you, and, and nobody, uh, uh, you know, cares for you. And, and uh, notice what he said there in Job chapter number 42, uh, verse number, or what it says there, uh, Job chapter number 42, verse number 11. This is what he learned. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and com comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, we talked about how some Christians have said uh, that they're the only one going through what they're going through, or, or uh, you know, we, we sometimes forget that uh, the devil wants us to be so focused upon, you know, our problems that we forget that there are others that are sometimes hurting. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, we talked about how Job was not unique in having health problems, you know, and, and we stop there, uh, page number 11, uh, letter L, uh, down towards the bottom there, is where we uh, stopped the last time we were together, and uh, we're going to pick up there, uh, but before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer, all right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord, we thank you for each one that's e who was able to be here tonight, 
Lord, I know there's some folks that uh, were not able to join us for various reasons, Lord, some uh, because of health reasons, Lord, others uh, because of other reasons. But Lord, I do thank you for those that were able to be here. Lord, we do pray that you would speak to each of our hearts. Lord, help us to learn these lessons that Job uh, uh, learned. And Lord, that we, we too would come forth as gold. Lord, that's our heart uh, and uh, desire and prayer here tonight. Lord, that each of us would come forth as gold no matter what we go through. Lord, uh, we ask that you would be glorified in all that's said and done here tonight during this lesson time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, if you have a question or a comment, don't be afraid to raise your hand uh, nice and high. I may try to finish a, a thought or a sentence, uh, but uh, keep your hand up there. Uh, I'll get to you as quickly as I possibly can. You know, uh, as I mentioned, Job was not uh, unique in having health problems that stopped him dead in his tracks. Um, this last week, we, uh, uh, of course, many of you know that uh, there was a family that had uh, her, her dad went into the hospital and... Uh, um, there was uh, some health issues as far as they weren't sure if he was uh, cognitive, if his mind was awake or, or uh, that he was there. Uh, and uh, I've seen where people have, you know, such debilitating diseases to where either, their, you know, their body is no longer functioning, their mind is still there, uh, but their body can no longer function. Or I've seen just the opposite where... Uh, their mind is not there. Their body can function, they're able to do things, uh, but their mind is not there. And that, that is a hard thing to watch uh, when that happens. But I've also seen where uh, people that have had, you know, um, you know good health, you know, uh, um, I, I remember hearing of a, a young man, I think he was uh, in his 20s, uh, late, late teens, early 20s, they had a stroke. This was when I was uh, in my 20s. Um, and, you know, the whole right side of his body was no longer able to uh, do anything. Um, some of you remember, we had a missionary that we supported uh, for many years, and, and their son was in an accident. And uh, because of that accident, he had some, uh, you know, he was impaired. He was not able to function normally. And uh, he had to have a wheelchair the rest of his life. And, and of course, he passed away not too long ago. But, but uh, there are times that things happen that, uh, you know, Job, Job going through what he went through, uh, that was not unique to Job. Job having some health problems, uh, you know, you think about uh, the health problems that he had, uh, the Bible tells us there, look, look back real quick like in uh, Job chapter number 2, Job chapter number 2, and uh, it says there, uh, picking up in verse number uh, uh, 7, so, 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 went forth, uh, so Satan went uh, forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore uh, boils from the sole of his foot, of his foot uh, unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. And then if you uh, skip down to uh, uh, verse number 11, and uh, uh, tells us about uh, you know, roughly how long uh, that he was uh, uh, debilitated. And of course, his friends came along. And in verse number uh, 13, as a matter of fact, it says, So they sat down with him among the ground. Notice how long? Seven days, seven days and seven nights. Well, that's a long time, isn't it? Amen. Anybody ever been sick for a long time? I, I, uh, uh, I got sick one time in Bible college, um, and uh, um, I got sick uh, for three days. I was not able to function, I couldn't do anything. Um, you know, I was offering up my uh, uh, offerings to the porcelain God, and if you don't know what that means, I'll explain to you later, amen? But uh, um, I was uh, kneeling there in the bathroom, and uh, uh, boy, I tell you, that's about it. That's all I was able to do was go to the bathroom and sleep, and go to the bathroom and sleep. And, and uh, uh, matter of fact, the, uh, 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 the friend of ours, Brother Rick Scarberry, uh, he told me, he said, Tim, if you're not, uh, if you're not feeling well uh, tomorrow, this was the third day, he said, if you're not better by tomorrow, he said, I'm, I'm going to take you to the hospital. I'm going to force you to go to the hospital. And you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, man, I don't need a hospital bill. And I'm like, Lord, I need to get feeling better. And, and uh, I had lost, in that uh, three days, I had lost 25 pounds. 
That was a lot of weight to lose very quickly, and that's why they were thinking something was wrong and, and uh, uh, lost some uh, muscle mass, as a matter of fact, and, and uh, all kinds of stuff. But anyways, um, it, it, it was debilitating. And here in our text, of course, we know that Job, he was, uh, he was stopped dead in his tracks for seven days and seven nights. You think about this, I, I, we are talking about how painful it must have been. You know, because it, it, he had boils everywhere. It didn't matter where he, you know, if he sat down, he laid down, if he, you know, uh, tried to sit cross-legged, whatever, he's in pain, amen? It's, it's just something that, uh, you know, you can't function. Uh, I, I know there's a, a disease out there called fibromyalgia. I know that it's very uh, debilitating. It causes people to not be able to function normally. Uh, the... Uh, uh, they can't explain the pain, you know, it's not like, you know, hey, I've got a, you know, a big red sore right here, amen? Some of you have a big sore right here, but uh, uh, stick with me, all right? But anyway, <laughs> some of you are willing to admit it, amen? But, but uh, you know, it's not like, oh, i got a big sore here, my arm hurts, this is what's uh, causing that pain. With fibromyalgia, there's no explanation, there's no, you know, hey, this is what uh, is causing the pain, it's just, uh, there's aches and pains all over but uh, uh, this was something, you know, with Job, this was something that was not unique. Uh, and there have been, uh, have been, and will be others in the future, which will have debilitating health issues that may even impede life itself for them. You know, it may cause somebody to, to uh, no longer be able to work the job that they once had. You know, uh, um, I, I, uh, my job, as far as a pastor, you know, if you want to, call it a job, and my ministry is talking, amen? Um, if uh, something were to ever happen to my voice or my tongue, uh, that would impede me from being able to do my job properly, amen? I know of pastors that have lost their voice. Uh, they had some, maybe a throat cancer or something like that, they had to have their voice box removed or, or uh, you know, something altered it so that they couldn't speak anymore and uh, they no longer were able to be in the ministry. That would be a hard thing to do, amen? Uh, it would be debilitating. It would, it would cause you to be thinking, oh man, you know, what, what's, what's wrong? What have I done? Remember we talked about that, some of the things that went through Job's mind. But the most important lesson that Job learned through all of this is that, uh, 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 that you and I must learn as well, is that you are never alone when you are going through bad things in life. Even though Job had the health problems that he had, amen, he had it bad, amen. Um, I, I've tried to fathom and tried to understand, you know, I've, I've broken ribs and, and that's painful. We were talking about that uh, this last week here with some folks and it's painful just to breathe, amen, just to take a <gasps> big old breath, you know. Uh, I remember uh, trying to take a big breath and it was like, <gasps> oh, oh. You know, no matter what I did, I, and then finally, I, what I would do is just, uh, I'd take a pillow and just kind of press it against my chest and take it a quick breath as quick as I could and as deep as I could. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, I finally got that deep breath. Amen. Uh, if you've never had that problem, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Be thankful that you haven't had that issue. But I've tried to understand the pain that Job had to be dealing with. So much so that he didn't do anything. You know, you think about that. I, 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 the Bible didn't tell us he must have ate, eaten maybe something or he had to at least drink water, amen. But, but it had been so sore for him to be able to, to try to function, uh, he wasn't able to function. You know, but we need to realize that God is there with us. He's right there with you every step of the way. No matter what you're going through, no matter, you know, you, you may say, well, nobody else cares about me, and nobody comes along and says, oh, I'm so sorry you're going through this, you know, and, and I've told you, I told you this before, I have a better empathy for those that uh, you know, have breathing problems, you know, uh, after breaking the ribs and all that, and, and uh, going through all what I went through, I have a better empathy. When somebody says, I can't breathe, oh, you know what, I understand, amen, hey, just take a seat. Hey, just uh, just wait here for a little bit. They say, Pastor, I, I can't go to church because they can't breathe. I can understand that a little bit, amen? Uh, there were times, remember I told you before, I, I'd get up from this chair, come to here, and it was like, <sighs> couldn't breathe, amen? I couldn't get that breath and, and I had to stand here and, oh, Lord, help me, amen? Uh, so I understand that. But, you know, we need to realize that God is there with us. No matter what we're going through, God's there with us the entire way. 
God has even promised to be with us no matter what we go through or what dark valleys we may travel in life. Look with me, if you will, in the latter part of Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 5. Very familiar passage here. <coughs> Hebrews chapter number 13. And notice verse number 5. It says here for the, in the latter part of that verse, For he hath said, I will what? Never, Never leave thee, nor what? Forsake nor forsake thee. That's a promise, amen? No matter what we're going through, no matter how many, you know, how bad we may think we have our, our health issues, no matter uh, what we're going through, no matter what we're dealing with, we're not alone. Why? God's there right, with, right there with us. I don't. I, I, I didn't. I didn't mention this, but you know, you think of uh, Psalm chapter number twenty-three. I, I like the verse there. I think it's verse number four, which says, "Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil." Why? For thou art what? Thou art with me. You know, the, the psalmist David he says, "Hey, no matter what I go through." No matter what valley I, I face, I'm not going to be fearful of that valley. It says, it says the valley of the shadow of death. You know, I don't know if you've ever been in a, a place where it's kind of dark or, or there's some shadows and you can't quite see what's, uh, what's down there. Amen? It's, uh, it can be kind of, uh, um, I don't know, uh, just cause anxiety of some sort. Amen? Just kind of, uh, yeah, I don't go down that alley, amen, uh, that's, that's kind of dark there, uh, there were places, uh, uh, when I drove truck, uh, there were places in, in Chicago, for instance, that I would need, uh, uh, teenagers and, uh, those that are getting their license, close your ears for a moment, I wouldn't stop at the stoplight, all right, uh, in Chicago, why, because I knew it was a bad area, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm, I don't want to be, you know, robbed or killed over this stupid load, amen? Uh, I'm just going to, you know, I'd slow down and look both ways and, man, go and make, you know, just go right through those lights. and Because uh, there were times, it would depend on the time of day. Now, if it was daylight, hey, I'd be fine. All right, stoplight, all right. I'm going to stop at the stoplight. We're talking about 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Those were the times that I'm like, uh, uh there's a yeah, crowd no. at the light. Huh? There's a little drag gathering. Up there. Yeah, there's, there's a crowd <laughs> gathering. You're like, oh, yeah, I think I'll drive through this one. Too. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we love you, son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, I walk to the drive through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. But uh, th those are those times when, when we just say, okay, Lord, I know you're there with me. And it's a comfort to know that no matter what we go through, even if even if our friends, you know, we, we expect our friends to come along and say, hey, you know, I'm so sorry you're going through this, and, and hey, I understand, we, we want them to empathize with us, amen? But if our friends don't do that, if our friends, you know, say, oh, you've got sin in your life, that's why you're going through all this, we can have a assurance to know that, hey, God's there with us. We're not alone. You know, sometimes you may forget this and need to be reminded that the Lord is with you each step that you take. He's with you no matter what you're going through. As we can see in Joshua chapter number 1 and verse number 5 and 9. Notice there real quickly. Joshua chapter number 1. In verse number 5 and verse number 9. He said there, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee at all of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. In verse number 9, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is what? With thee. Where? Whithersoever thou goest. No matter where you're going, no matter what you're going to, like, like Joshua, remember Joshua was getting ready to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, and and uh, he was getting ready to lead them on to victory. And, and uh, all of a sudden the Lord says, hey, by the way, just so you don't uh, ever get to the point where you think you're alone, I'm there with you. Amen. And then uh, you may be like uh, the young man that was in 
uh, and that was with Elisha in 2 Kings chapter number 6. I'm going to turn there real quick, like. 2 Kings chapter number 6. And notice in verse number 14 and following. Elisha was being, uh, 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 being chased after by Ben Hadad. And uh, he go, goes down to uh, Dothan. And notice in verse number 14, of course, they, they go to uh, try to get him, uh, the, uh, uh, the Syrian army. And uh, uh, here they are in the city. In verse number 14, it says, Therefore sent he thither uh, horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and passed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host can pass the city, both with horses and chariots. And, uh, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? You know, sometimes we go through things and we think, Oh, man, the host of the enemy is surrounded. Amen. Uh, there's, there, I, I met, there, I'm in the castle all by myself and nobody else is there with me. Verse number 16, when he answered, we're talking about Elisha, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire, Round about Elisha. Boy, I tell you, that encourages me. Anytime I'm going through some things, and, and anytime I feel like uh, well, I'm the only one going through, I need to be reminded sometimes of Elisha. Okay, Lord, you got a host of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of angels that are, are ready to fight for me. Amen. You've got uh, a host that's uh, here standing hard uh, you know, against uh, uh, the onslaught of Satan. And sometimes we need to be reminded that we're not alone. Amen. Oh, uh, uh, you need to, be, uh, you need to remember you are never alone. Number one, uh, uh, you need to remember I am weak, but he is strong. Number two, uh, the Lord can do anything. Amen. I'm glad for that. Number three, I want to see the Lord through all of this. Number four, uh, we can learn the lesson. I want to be accepted of the Lord. Uh, number five, we, uh, we can see I will pray no matter what I'm facing. Number six, uh, you are never alone. Number seven there, uh, and lastly, actually, it's the last uh, point of this lesson. Uh, all my blessings come from the Lord. All my blessings come from the Lord. Back in our text there in Job chapter number 42. I want you to notice, uh, picking up there in verse number uh, 12, and uh, uh, we mentioned uh, the latter part of verse number 10 as well, uh, but then uh, uh, verse number 12 and finishing the rest of, of the chapter here. Excuse me, Job chapter number 42 and verse number 10, uh, in the latter part of verse number 10, says, Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And then verse number 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses, and he had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and uh, the name of the second uh, Keziah, the name of the third uh, uh, Karen uh, Hapuch, uh, and in the, all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job lived in 140 years, and he saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. One of the last lessons that Job learned through all of this is that all, that, uh, all the blessings that he had had come from the Lord. You know, you think of this, uh, Job had been blessed of the Lord in the beginning of his life. He really was. Uh, when you look at all that he had in Job chapter number 1, uh, turn to a real quick like, Job chapter number 1, in verse number uh, 2 and 3. By the way, he still had, you know, some people say, well, well wait a second, he should have had, you know, uh, 20, uh, you know, uh, 20 more kids. And No, he still had, uh, you know, a total of 20 kids, Amen. Uh, he had 10 more added to what he already had. Yes, they were dead, uh, but just like our family, you know, we have four up in heaven. 
uh, we still count them as part of our family with a total of nine kids, amen? Uh, my wife went through nine pregnancies, amen? And uh, uh, so uh, uh, poor Mrs. Job, she went through uh, 20 pregnancies at least, amen? But if you notice there, it says there in verse number uh, 2 and 3, And there were born unto him uh, seven sons and three daughters, uh, same as uh, he was given uh, later in life. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. You know, you realize when you look at all that, you realize he was truly a blessed man. He really was. Uh, you know, all the things that he had, he, God really had uh, his hand of blessing upon him. The blessings he had there in Job uh, chapter 1 it had ultimately come from the Lord. Having good health, you know, that's a blessing of, uh, of the Lord. I don't know if you've ever done this, but uh, has anybody ever gone through a hospital? Um, and I know, it, you know with HEPA laws and all that, you have to be careful nowadays. Uh, but you ever just walk through a hospital or, or through a nursing home and just kind of observe where people are at, you know, uh, health-wise? Well, I tell you, there's, uh, there's some people, uh, you know, they've, uh, um, you know we, we've had folks that have come here uh, that have had uh, mental, uh, you know, uh, capacities, disabilities. Uh, there's been people that, uh, you know, have come here for church, uh, you know, in a wheelchair. We have a couple different folks that come usually in a wheelchair. Uh, Brother Albert uh, Davis usually sits in the very back, and then uh, Lorraine Newberry, she usually sits off to the side there. And, and uh, Lorraine has to sit in a wheelchair, and Albert has to have a motorized wheelchair. And, uh, you know, there's just a number of, of people that, in this world, that have, you know, uh, uh, some bad health problems. Uh, you know, there's some people that don't have eyesight. Well, when was the last time you just thanked the Lord for your eyesight? You know, it's something we take for granted, isn't it? Uh, you know, we, uh, we, you know, look at things, and, you know, we open up our eyes in the morning, you know, get the sleep out of our eyes, and, and all that, and, but there's some people, um, they can't even see me. Um, you know, I've often wondered, is a blind person bothered by sleep in their eyes? I don't know. That'd be a question I'd have to ask them, amen? Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, things like that, we, that we take for granted. You know, especially, you know, you ever had that time when you're trying to open up your eyes, and your eyes have kind of, you know, got gunk in them, and you're trying to open them up, and, and you're like, oh, man. I Can you imagine something that they can't see anyways? You know, those of you that uh, can see without glasses or, or contacts or haven't had LASIK surgery, well, you ought to be thankful, amen? My wife, uh, most of you know this, and, and she'd be the first to admit it, she's as blind as a bat without uh, contacts or glasses, amen? She, she can't see anything. Uh, if, from me to uh, brother, uh, uh, brother Jake here, Brother Noah Bilski, uh, I would be a blur that close and anything beyond that she can't she can barely make out you know that there's even shapes and things like that uh, but uh, you know the closest she gets the, the you know more she can see you know she can see something as if it's like really close and I'm like how on earth can you see that close you know so you get it back here you know look at it this way but but uh, she's blind, you know, and, you know as far as uh, uh, not being able to see very well without corrective lenses that's something that some people, you know, they don't have to think about it. There's other people and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta put the glasses on in the morning. I gotta put the contacts in, they, you know. Uh, I don't know how my wife does that, you know, sticking something in your eye every day. And, you know, man, I just, uh, you know, take a drop of mine, I'm like, ah! You know, trying to get it out of my eye, <laughs> amen? But uh, not my wife, man, she just, you know, puts the, uh, puts the contact in there and, uh, you know, does this a little bit, and then, then she's fine, then she can see. Joe, you know, we take some of those things for granted, don't we? You ever, you ever hurt your finger? Uh, some of you remember I, I uh, snapped a tendon in my finger, and uh, uh, for uh, what was it, almost eight weeks, I had to have it in a brace. You ever had to have a finger in a brace for uh, you know eight weeks, and you try to function normally? Man, I was, you know I tried to shave, and I had to you know hold my hand out, you know when I when I had to shower. And, Finally, the doc was like, oh, yeah, you can shower. You just got to change the tape. I'm like, thanks for telling me that, doc. Amen. <laughs> that would have been helpful to know the first couple of weeks. Amen. But, uh, uh, you know, being able to function properly, 
When's the last time you thank the Lord for your hands? When's the last time you thank the Lord for your feet? And you said, well, I have a bad cough, or boy, I have aches and pains. You know, be thankful you can feel those aches and pains, because there's some people that can't even feel that. Be thankful that you even have eyes, amen? Well, I got to wear glasses the rest of my life. Be thankful you have eyes, amen? These things, having good health, that's a blessing from the Lord. There, there, there are some folks that have never had a broken bone all their life. How many have never broken a bone in their life? We're going to try to break... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get over here. No. Um, I, I have not had a broken bone in my life until uh, about seven years ago. We were at uh, uh, a youth rally, and, and uh, you know, all the kids were like, Oh, come on, Pastor Hallett. Oh, what are you... What what are you not man enough? I'm like, oh, okay. No. <laughs> Playing football you know, without pads. Amen. Well, that was a bright idea. Amen. Tackle football. And boy, I had two pastors, one play right after the other, came in with their shoulders lowered, and, and I heard the first one crack. I'm like, whoa. And I was like, okay, I'll go to the other side here. And then that guy, the, they gave that, you know, the other guy the, the ball, and he came in, crack. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Amen. <laughs> it is a painful thing. If you've never broken a bone before, it, it doesn't matter if it's an arm, if it's a you know, rib, whatever. It's painful, all right? But you know, there's some, and, and praise the Lord. You know, some of you are older, and you've not, you've not broken a bone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother, Brother uh, Nelson, was that the first bone you've ever broken? Your femurs? No? Okay. Uh, I was going to say, if that was the first one, boy, that would be really bad. <laughs> you've broken others, at least you kind of know what it feels like. But, but you know, there are some that have never experienced it. There, there are some that they've never experienced breathing problems. You know, there are some people that will go through all their life. They'll never have, you know, any major health problems. And praise the Lord for that. You know? Uh, praise the Lord that God uh, has, has granted some some people some good health, but you have to realize that you know uh, uh, there's a, uh, uh, it, all that is from the Lord. Some folks have never had to deal with chronic sickness or pains during during their their entire la lifespan. They'll never have to know what it's like to you know uh, having you know uh, some people will never have fibromyalgia. Uh, you know, th that's just a fact of life. There's some people that just won't have, you know, COPD. Uh, you know, there's some people that just won't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, chronic aches and pains. There's, uh, there's a, uh, uh, a funeral director here in town, and uh, she's younger, and, and she has uh, rheumatoid, arth rheumatoid arthritis. She, was, uh, she found out about it. She was in her 20s. I'm like, oh man, life. I'm sorry for you, you know. Uh, when she had, when the weather changes, guess what? She's having aches and pains. There's some people that will never experience that. How many have arthritis? Are willing to admit it? Amen. <laughs> All right, a few of you. It's painful when the weather changes. It there's pain. Amen. You say, how do you know, Pastor? They tell me. Amen. <laughs> Pray for my RA. It's hurting. Amen. You know, Job, he had good health. He had lots of possessions. He had ten children. And there is no indication that he had any major suffering in his life during the time leading up to Satan's onslaught of taking so much from Job in order to get Job to curse, uh, curse the Lord. And from, from all uh, of what we read there in, in the book of Job, he didn't have any health problems. He didn't have any other issues to, to deal with. And he had some good things happening to him. Many would consider someone with good health, lots of possessions, and as many children as Job had, ten, as being just lucky. Well, I've heard people say, oh, yeah, you, the, way you're, well, the reason you're like that, you're lucky. Well, there's no such a thing as luck. Amen? I know we joke about it. You know, if I didn't have any bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. But, you know, there is no thing as luck if we believe that God is in control. Amen? If we believe that God is, is uh, working, amen? And, and we need to realize that, that some people have that mindset. Some will say, well, they're just fortunate. You know, uh, uh, you know they just uh, always have uh, 
you know, uh, the, you know, things, good things happen to them, and, and they're just fortunate. <coughs> Some may even speculate that, well, you know, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. How many have ever heard that expression before? Somebody born with a silver spoon in their mouth. What it means is that, it, you know, they, they basically had everything kind of handed to them. They inherited maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know, millions of dollars or thousands of dollars or whatever. You know, uh, there are some, some of you have inherited things. Praise the Lord for that, amen? But you know, that doesn't mean that you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Amen? But Job wasn't either. From all indication, if, you know, the reason he was the way he was is that he worked hard for it, amen? He, uh, uh, you know, from, from the scriptures, from what we can gather, from what we can learn, uh, he uh, he did you know have everything they had. Of course, it was the the blessings of the Lord, but he was willing to work hard for it. Some may say that folks like that have an unfair advantage in life. I had somebody one time tell me uh, uh, they saw the vehicle that we have, and and they said, "Well, you just you know life is unfair because you have that kind of a vehicle." And I said, uh, "We just the Lord blessed us with that vehicle. It wasn't." We didn't buy that new, and then I told him how old it was, and uh, that was about a year ago, and uh, so now it's, uh, what is it, what, 14 years old now? So it was 13 years old by that, at that time, and, and I said, hey, God's just, God was good to us, he blessed us, and, and uh, I remember having a, there was a, 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 a dealer that I went to, and I said, hey, this is the kind of vehicle I'm looking for, and, and uh, could you help me find one like that? And this is this was our price range, and he looked at me, and he laughed, and he said, you will never find anything like that. And I said, boy, we have a big God. He'll be able to do great things. And I said, well, he provides it. I'm going to stop back by and, and show you. And I did. I later went back in. I said, hey, look at this vehicle, and this is the price range we got it in. He's like, I, I, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't saw it my, for myself. You know, some people think that uh, you know, people have an unfair advantage, but all the things that Job had, you think about this, the good health. He had good health, amen? Leading up to that point uh, in uh, uh, Job chapter number 2, he had good health. Uh, and all of his possessions, we know what he had. Look at all the, all the possessions that he had. The, the uh, uh, 7,000 sheep and, and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 uh, uh, she asses and, and a very great household. And then, of course, he had the seven, daughter, uh, seven sons and, and three daughters. You know, he had all these things. Then, we also know that uh, he had an abundance uh, of children. These were all blessings from the Lord. All of them. Everything they had. You have to have the mindset, as a Christian, that everything that I have is from the Lord. Amen. Then you also need to have the mindset... Everything that I have belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're just a steward. Whether it's your job, your uh, career, uh, your house, your car, your children. Amen. No matter what it is, hey, this belongs to the Lord. I'm a steward. Lord, help me to be a good steward of what you've entrusted to me. Amen. 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 Why? If you don't have that mindset, as soon as the Lord takes away something or allows something to be taken away, He allows a child to be taken, you become bitter towards God. Wow, this was mine. How dare the Lord take this away from me? This was my car. You know, I, I remember uh, Mrs. Naomi and I, when we got our, our uh, 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 um, what is it? no, not the Navigator, uh, uh, Chrysler. Uh, town and country, there we go. Our town and country, our van, uh, our minivan. You know, we're, we're so proud that we have gotten it paid off. We're like, wow, this is awesome. No more payments. Praise the Lord. 70 miles an hour just south of town here. And uh, a deer come running out. We're like, oh, we just paid this off. But we're like, hey, praise the Lord. No, the kids were there. <coughs> There were some things that could have happened, amen. Uh, I was eating a uh, uh, um, frosty. frosty, amen. <laughs> I was eating my frosty. I thought, wow, 
And I actually held on to it, amen? <laughs> Watch. <No. laughs> I held on to my Frosty. But you know what? Praise the Lord, the airbag didn't go off. Had the airbag gone off, I would have one hand on the steering wheel, and uh, the airbag went off. Went, oh, you know, something, something seriously could have happened. Uh, and I don't know if you ever have had an airbag. I've been very fortunate in the accidents that I've had. Um, I had one accident that the airbag went off, but it didn't fully inflate, and I was already, my hands were already fully straight out when I uh, wrecked my car, uh, split my car in half in, uh, in Bible college. And uh, uh, that airbag didn't fully deploy. It was kind of an older uh, car, and they, the airbags were new at that time. And uh, uh, praise the Lord, it didn't go off. As it could have done, and it, the doctor even said, had you, you know, had your hands straight out like that, it would have, it would have probably broke your arms uh, had it fully deployed. And I was like, oh, uh, that's good to know. <laughs> Um, but, uh, uh, you know, when we hit the, uh, the, the deer, the airbag, because of where, where the deer hit, uh, the airbags didn't deploy. There was a lot of things, this is Naomi and I, we began to talk about. We, we were sad that we lost the car. Amen. I'll, I'll be honest. So why? We just paid it off. Amen. We were sad. We, we liked it. It was a good vehicle. Ran good. But you know, we were praising the Lord. We're like, well, praise the Lord. We didn't uh, have the airbag go off. If somebody get, you know, if the airbag would have gone off, I could have you know, swerved. Uh, there was a vehicle beside us. Uh, there was a semi behind us. Uh, it could have easily have, you know, hit hit the deer and swerved into them and, and flipped over or something. One of the kids could have been ejected from the vehicle. He said, well, they were all wearing seatbelts. Yeah, but I've seen that things like that happen. The semi behind us could have easily, you know, uh, we could have lost control. And the semi behind us could have easily, you know, ran us over. There was a lot of things we began to thank the Lord for. Sometimes we, when we go through some things in life, we need to be thankful and grateful for what the Lord has given to us. Not be focused on what, what was lost. Amen. I understand, you know, the loss of a job, the loss of a vehicle, uh, uh, you know, uh, loss of a house, and, you know, loss of a loved one. I understand that. But if we only focus on that, we forget about all the other blessings that the Lord has given to us. We forget that everything that we have is the Lord's, and he can decide whether he wants to take it or, you know, bless us with more of it or whatever. We're going to have to stop because of time. Bring that lesson back with you next week. We're, we'll, we'll finish up this lesson here, or willing, next week. And uh, um, because of time here, we're, we're going to have to uh, stop here. But, but uh, I do hope you learned some of these lessons here. Uh, we'll pick up there, uh, page number 13.